Recently discharged JFK records uncover a plot by the CIA to set off bombs in the USA, murdering thousands of blameless Americans, and after that pointing the finger at it on Cuba. Due to mankind's hesitance to go to war, governments must trap their residents into suspecting that different nations represent a hazard to their security. The double dealing of the natives is regularly done by means of false banner operations, an assault arranged by the administration and after that faulted for the nation they need to attack. TheFreeThoughtProject.com reports, in the mid-1960s, the military modern complex alongside their organization together and the CIA needed war with Cuba. Their exclusive issue was pitching this war to the American individuals as they don't needed anything to do with it, since it would be their children and little girls who might kick the bucket in it. Since help for a war with Cuba was so inadequate, and the way that Cuba represented no genuine danger to America, the war hawks concocted an arrangement to delude the American open into tolerating a war. This unique arrangement was known as Operation Northwoods and America's Big Shots was completely behind it. We could explode a U.S. send in Guantanamo Bay and censure Cuba, and, lost records in U.S. daily papers would cause an accommodating flood of national outrage, the beforehand declassified reports noted. The records demonstrate the Joint Chiefs of Staff drew up and endorsed plans for what might be the most degenerate arrangement at any point made by the U.S. government. Composers James Bamford, writer of Body of Secrets, Doubleday, a book enumerating the declassification of Operation Northwoods. As indicated by those reports, the Joint Chiefs even proposed utilizing the potential demise of space explorer John Glenn amid the main endeavor to put an American into space as a false appearance for war with Cuba. While Operation Northwoods was absolutely uncovering, in this most recent arrival of the JFK files, we now have a more intensive take a gander at the subtle elements the profound state was wanting to trap Americans into tolerating a war. In the record which was checked TS for top secret, the U.S. military uncovered its intent to trap Americans into war with Cuba. The designs were to make and do false banner fear assaults against American residents and utilize them as publicity to pick up help for the war against Fidel Castro. In the reports, authorities noticed that the plans for the assaults were endorsed and the Joint Chiefs simply expected to pick one of the nine affections to use to deceive U.S. residents into war. The designs included slaughtering guiltless individuals and harming others and ensuring these examples would be generally exposed as purposeful publicity to begin an out-of-line war. We could build up a communist Cuban dread crusade in the Miami region in other Florida urban communities and even in Washington. The dread battle could be pointed at Cuban evacuees looking for safe house in the United States. We could sink a boatload of Cubans en route to Florida, genuine or reenacted, the record peruses. Notice how unfeeling these creatures sound when looking at suffocating a boatload of Cubans, which would have likely contained pure youngsters, to begin a sham war for benefit. The archive proceeds with, we could cultivate endeavors on the lives of Cuban displaced people in the United States even to the degree of injuring in examples to be generally advertised. Detonating a couple of plastic bombs and precisely picked recognizes, the capture of a Cuban specialist and the arrival of arranged archives substantiating Cuban association likewise would be useful in anticipating the possibility of a reckless government. When perusing the above report, one is normally disposed to start scrutinizing each and every war America has ever entered. It is likewise imperative to take note of the mainstream media's part in pushing these deceives begin wars. As said over, the U.S. government had arranged archives prepared to hand off to their operators and the media to start offering the war. In fact, the American nationals and whatever is left of the world everywhere put such a great amount of confidence in prevailing press that they are regularly driven into risky and savage circumstances, construct altogether in light of untruths. One glaring and greatly significant occurrence is the manner by which the corporate media turned into a parroting association for the falsehoods paving the way to the attack of Iraq in 2003. Insight assembled by this and different governments leaves almost certainly that the Iraq administration keeps on having in disguise the absolute most deadly weapons at any point conceived. At that point President George Bush attested in an open address on March 17, 2003.
this administration has officially utilized weapons of mass devastation against Iraq's neighbors and against Iraq's kin. Shrub's affirmations were addressed by human rights specialists, as well as by UN weapons investigators and innumerable others, so not long after the U.S. attacked the sovereign country, the New York Times took up the slack to fill in a proper casus belli. Presently, over ten years after a huge number of honest individuals were butchered in the contention made by the United States, the world knows, there were never any weapons of mass demolition. It wasn't simply Iraq. Vietnam was begun once again a false banner as well. Nothing represents the predominant press parroting of false banner fear superior to writing about the Gulf of Tonkin episode, maybe one of most glaring untruths at any point thought up as an avocation for war. On August 5, 1964, the New York Times announced, President Johnson has requested retaliatory activity against gunboats in certain supporting offices in North Vietnam after restored assaults against American destroyers in the Gulf of Tonkin. Additional outlets, for example, the Washington Post, reverberated this claim. In any case, it wasn't valid. By any stretch of the imagination. Indeed, the Gulf of Tonkin episode, as it wound up noticeably known, ended up being an imaginary creation affability of the administration to heighten war in Vietnam, prompting the passings of a huge number of U.S. troops and a great many Vietnamese, instigating the biggest against war development in American history, and discoloring the notoriety of a country once considered at any rate to some degree honorable according to the world. In 2010, more than 1,100 transcripts from the Vietnam time were discharged demonstrating Congress and authorities raised genuine questions about the data bolstered to them by the Pentagon and White House. Be that as it may, while this inner protesting occurred, predominant press obediently detailed authority articulations as though the veracity of the data couldn't be debated. What number of silly wars and a great many passings are because of the falsehoods propagated by the U.S. government and their parrots in the standard? We may never realize that answer. In any case, whenever somebody discloses to you that scrutinizing the official story makes you insane or unpatriotic, demonstrate to them this article and reveal to them that indiscriminately tolerating everything the predominant press and the administration say as certainty has been in charge of the passings of millions, 